Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 72. In this episode there are some exciting features that you need to know about so without further ado let's jump in. So let's start the episode by talking about Google Photos and we got a new feature in the video editing that will allow you to add some effects to your videos. So here is one of the videos I have and when I tap on edit and then scroll through the tabs you will find a brand new tab over here called effects so now it's downloading the effects for me and you will see here tons of them and this is the first time to see this feature in google photos and i only got it on the pixel 7 pro running android 14 beta 3 i'm not sure if this is related or not but here we have it so here is the first effect called dust max and you have another one and here's how it looks when you play the video here is a black and white film, here is Lomo, light leak, which will add some effects, as you see here, some lens flares added to the corners, and then you have film mood, you have chromatic, then you have the fish eye, vintage, layouts, which, which looks very cool in my opinion, layouts is great, if you have a video of yourself it might look very nice when you apply this new layout effect and then we have retro film and finally poster you will notice here that poster adds this unfolded paper effect as if it was folded before and that also looks really cool and by the way i knew about this feature from akshay patil and i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing the name incorrectly but he sent me a screenshot with the feature and i found it on my phone and that's why it's included in today's episode so special thanks to akshay and let's move on to the second feature change number two is in the media controls now when you play a video you will see three buttons in a sort of only one like before and for reference here is my pixel 7a and you can only see the play and pause button but now we got two buttons extra one to seek forward and one to seek backward one final change in google photos that i also got in all other google apps when you tap on the profile menu you will get a full screen view in a sort of only a floating card like before and for reference here is the 7a this is how it used to look like just a couple of days ago but now all of a sudden i'm getting this full screen menu in all other google apps but by the way this is only happening on the 7 pro running android 14 so i'm still not sure if it's related to it or not and now let's talk about google messages and the first change we have is the new badge that appears on top of that profile picture of any rcs conversation to let you know the difference between the rcs and normal text messages and i have it on two conversations here in my list change number two when you open the conversation you will find that all the reactions you have will animate for the first few seconds and then stop change number three and the last one when you use google messages on the web now you can reply to individual messages by hovering your mouse over the bubble and you will see a reply button when you click on it it will show you the message on top of the text box and here's how it looks when you send the reply next gboard and now when you type a new message like this one for example what about dinner tonight and then put a question mark you will notice here that the emoji kitchen suggestion will show up in the first spot and when you tap on it it will expand in line so you can choose the emoji or the sticker you want and you can tap the x to close it i think i used to have this feature a long time ago but it has been removed and now it's back again but i also noticed a lot more text styles showing in the emoji kitchen suggestions and in this case i wrote how are you today and i'm getting a lot more styles that i've never seen before so it seems like google is actively updating this area next google play store and we got a new feature called sync apps this feature will allow you to automatically install apps on other devices signed in with the same google account once you install them on this device and this will save you from the hassle of installing the app multiple times on other devices manually but it will happen automatically in the background and for you to activate the feature head over to the profile menu and choose manage apps and device and you will find a new option over here called sync apps to devices and here it will show you the full list of apps signed into the same google account so you can choose whatever you want but what i like the most about this feature is the ability to choose between one way or two way syncing so for example if i want this device to be the only one to install apps on other devices i can activate the feature here and keep it deactivated on other devices but if i want two ways syncing with a specific device 
I can activate it here and on the other device and that means both devices will synchronize with each other and I think that will give you a lot more flexibility. And now let's talk about Google Home. If you are using a Pixel phone and then go to the home tile, you will see a completely redesigned page that matches exactly the home page of the Google Home app instead of the old design. So here is my Pixel 7 Pro that didn't get this new change and you can see a totally different page. Here you can uh, remove or edit controls while here you can do everything from the same page without the need to go to a separate menu. So it works exactly the same as the app itself. It will first show you all the groups you have in a carousel that you can scroll through horizontally if you have multiple ones and then all your favorites are grouped together and then from here you can reorder by dragging the tiles over and once you're happy with the change tap on save and you can also edit by removing or adding more controls if you want and i also found that when you go to any group like in my case here i have a group contains three lights and here I have individual controls for each light or I can control all of them together using the switch over here or the quick shortcuts for the colors. And the second change in Google Home is the ability to add your light groups to the favorites. So for example, uh, before this change, the light groups were not included in this menu, so there is no way to add them. But now, thankfully, you can add any group to your favorites list and that's when they will appear on the home page of the Google Home app and also in the device menu. And now let's talk about YouTube. And the first change is in the captions. If you take a look closely, you will find that the captions are now using a translucent background instead of the dark black. They have more rounded corners and the font looks nicer as well. So the overall experience in the captions is much better. Change number two is the ability to create shorts with comments from a specific video. So let me show you an example. So I'm gonna open this one and then expand the comments section. And if I like this comment, I can tap on the reply button and then I will have a shorts button over here. Tapping on it will take this comment and put it in a floating card. And then I can record my short with this comment already included change number three and the last one when you scroll through your home feed you might see a card like this one telling you can't decide what to watch and it has a play something button when you tap on this button it will play a random video and this video will play in this form as if it's a short even though this video is 16 minutes and 35 seconds so i'm not sure why it's playing in this format but i tried to reproduce the same thing from the home feed and i couldn't I also tried it again and it recommended a video of my channel and it's also 8 minutes and 44 seconds so I'm not sure why it's doing this but this is how it works. And now let's talk about YouTube music. And the first change we have today is in the minimized player. So let's say you are playing a song like this one. When you swipe down to minimize it, you will notice here that the buttons on the right are different. And instead of having a play button and then a next button, now we have the cast button and only the play and pause button. And now if you want to change songs, you can swipe left or right and instead of using the buttons like before. But the only annoying change here is the inability to dismiss the player by swiping down like before but it will stick over here and all you can do is to switch songs or cast media or tap on it to expand one more time. Change number two is the spring recap is now available under your profile menu and you will find it over here, your recap. And when you tap on it, you will get exactly the same thing like all other recaps that will allow you to create some photos or albums. And also you can watch a quick story to tell you more about the songs you have listened to during the spring. Change number three is the redesigned now playing screen. Unfortunately, I got the change for about 10 minutes only and then I'm back again to the same old design you see right now. But thankfully, I took a screenshot to show you how it looks. You will first notice that the song and the video buttons are at the very top and then the album art comes right away and instead of having a gap between the two like before. Secondly, the song and the artist name are left aligned in their own line and instead of being in the center with the like and dislike buttons next to them. And then all the buttons comes next to each other. Here you have the like, dislike, save, share, download, and it's a carousel that you can scroll through left and right. Then you have the progress bar and the other controls that are exactly the same, but you'll notice here that everything is now shifted down. 
Change number four is the support for podcasts. You might see a splash screen like this one when you open the YouTube app telling you that this feature is now available for you and you have a listen now button that will take you right away to the podcasts. But if you want to access it from the app, you can simply open it and then go to explore and then you will see a podcasts section over here. Tapping on it will give you a totally different experience when compared to music. It will first show you some recommendations that are classified into different categories like start exploring popular shows, popular episodes, comedy, sports, society and culture and so on and so forth. So let's tap on any of them to see how it looks. It will first show you the podcast name, a description that you can expand to no more, then three buttons, one to share, one to add to library, and then the ellipses, which will show you the same exact options, add to library and share, so I'm not sure why it's here. And after that, you will see the episodes that you can listen to with different buttons over here that looks exactly the same like the Google Podcasts app. Here I have a download button because I have a YouTube premium subscription. I have a bookmarks button. When I tap on it, it will add this episode to a newly created a playlist called episodes for later. And here I can see the episodes I bookmarked from the previous page. And the last button we have is the play button. You will also see here how many minutes left and the date written on the left. And when you go to the now playing screen, you will also get a slightly different experience over here. So let's go to the now playing and you will see that the playback speed has a shortcut next to the media controls. And then you have a sleep timer that you can choose between five minutes up to one hour or just for this track. And then you have the like dislike buttons, uh, seek forward for 30 seconds, seek backward for 10 seconds. And then at the top you have audio and video so you can switch between the two uh, the up next looks exactly the same but here you have a section called details instead of lyrics and this one will give you much more details about about the podcast and then you have related and that's pretty much it it's also worth mentioning that the media controls card in the quick settings is different when compared to music so instead of having the previous and next tracks buttons, now you have the 10 seconds and 30 seconds seek forward and backward. And you have also the playback speed shortcut. With every tap, the playback speed will change and it will loop again from the beginning until you reach the 1x back again. And here you have also the shuffle button. And the last change, when you try to add a song to a playlist you already have or by creating a new one, like in my case here, it will first ask you which playlist you want to add it to. I'm going to create a new playlist like this and then choose private, create. And now this song has been added to the playlist. But the next time I add another song to, the, to a playlist, it will automatically add it to the same one. When I tap, as you see here, it's added it automatically to the same one, but I can tap on the change button if I want to make a change. And this is exactly the same behavior we have in the normal YouTube app. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to share with you. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any more features or reach me out on social media to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you the next video.